Okay, let's uh, take up uh, exercise 7 dust 1 uh, for the problems uh, on preparing sales budget and production budget. Now, by the way, we have uh, the chapter 7 is uh, focused on preparation of uh, the different types of budgets. Now, actually, in the budgeting process, uh, we have to begin with uh, the sales budget, which is actually the cornerstone of uh, the budgeting process. So, in other words, uh, we have uh, to begin with uh, the sales uh, budget uh, being the cornerstone after you have prepared a uh, sales forecast. So in uh, E7-1, we have the preparation of uh, the sales budget, which should actually be the first budget to prepare and to follow is the production budget. The sales department of macro manufacturing company has forecast sales for its single product to be 20,000 units for June, with three quarters of the sales expected in the East region and one-fourth in the West region. The budgeted selling price is $25 per unit. The desired ending inventory on June 30 is 2,000 units, and the expected beginning inventory on June 1 is 3,000 units. So prepare a sales budget and a production budget. So we now begin with uh, the region, uh, east, west, and the total. And then for the unit sales volume, as stated, uh, we have uh, three quarters uh, in the east region and only one-fourth in the west. And if the total uh, uh, single product sales is 20,000 units, so we multiply three-fourths by 20,000, uh, we get 15,000, and the remainder is sales in the West. So we have the unit selling price, giving the total sales in the amount of 500,000. Now, since we already have the sales budget, then we proceed to the production budget. If you can identify how many units can you sell, then you can already uh, prepare the production budget. So you'll be able to uh, determine how many units to produce because you already have an idea of how many units you can sell. Okay, so we have now the sales from the sales budget, 20,000 units, and then we add back the desired ending inventory on June 30, that's uh, equal to 2,000 units. So we have now the total, and we deduct the estimated beginning inventory of 3,000 units. So we now have your total production of 19,000 units. Uh, if you are working backward, in other words, if you want to determine the unit sold, then you can begin from the total production. You add the estimated beginning inventory, and we have to deduct the desired ending inventory. You will get your estimated number of units to be sold. Now we have in E7-2 production budget and direct materials budget. Now, just like in uh, sales budget, that if you can identify how many units or how many units is your estimated sales, then you'll be able to determine the estimated uh, units to be produced. In the case of uh, E7-2, 
if you can identify how many units to produce so you'll be able to determine uh, how many units of your direct materials to be purchased or to be used so we have now the units to be sold given at uh, 20,000 units that's your projected sales and then we are going to add the desired ending inventory given at 3,000 uh, or 1,000 units that's your uh, desired ending inventory of finished goods so we now have total of 21,000 units then deduct the estimated beginning inventory of 3,000 units. So we have the estimated production of 18,000 units. Now, if we can identify that your estimated production is 18,000 units, then you will be able to determine your estimated direct materials budget. So we have now the materials required for production of uh, 18,000 units, uh, 18,000, okay, and for material A and for material B. Then we add the desired ending inventory on March 31 uh, for 1,000 pounds or uh, here. We have material A, desired in the inventory, is uh, 1,000 uh, gallons for A, and for B is 1,000 pounds. So we get the total by adding here 19,000 gallons and pounds. Then we deduct the estimated beginning inventory of 501,000 for uh material a no so we have now for the estimated beginning inventory on march one for 500 gallons for material a and for 1000 gallons uh pounds for material b so we now get the total quantity to be purchased 18,500 gallons for material A and for material B, 18,000 pounds. So we have now the unit price of material A for $2, while uh, the unit price of uh, material B is $1. So we now get the uh, total direct materials uh, purchases for materials A and B. Next, we go to uh, E7-3. Uh, we prepare the production budget and the direct labor budget. Now, just like your materials, uh, this time you'll be able to determine your direct labor budget if you can identify your budgeted production. So we have now sales of uh, 45 thousand uh, units in the case of uh, e7-3 45,000 units and uh, we are going to add the desired ending inventory of 4,000 units then we have the total deduct the estimated beginning inventory so the result is the total production equivalent to 44,000 units. Now, if you can identify the estimated production, and here we have uh, the two departments in uh, the factory, the cutting, the assembly department. So the hours required for production we have now the number of units of 44,000 units times the unit cost for uh, the cutting department. We have the unit cost uh, of labor. 
the labor rate the labor rate for uh, the cutting department is uh, 0.25 or 25 cents that's uh, per hour and uh, in the assembly uh, department it's uh, 50 cents uh, per unit no per unit so we now get the hourly rate of 14 for the cutting department and 12 for the assembly department. So we now get the total direct labor cost for both the cutting and the assembly department. So in other words, you first have to uh, determine the number of hours required for production and after that, you'll be able to uh, determine your total direct labor cost. So we have now E-7-3. Does, uh, does Next, we have E-7-4, uh, the requirement of E-7-4 is the cost of goods sold budget, prepare cost of goods sold budget for the crest hills, Manufacturing company for the year in the December 31, 2016, from the following estimates inventories for production unit. So we have January 1 and December 31. Direct materials uh, purchased during the year 854, uh, beginning inventory of direct materials. 31,000 ending uh, inventory for uh, a direct materials purchased during the year uh, 854,000 beginning inventory of direct materials 31,000 and ending inventory of direct materials 26,000 totals from other budgets included Direct labor cost and total factory overhead cost. So we now have these uh, two amounts as uh, incurred by uh, both uh, departments or by both uh, uh, companies or for the Crest Hills Manufacturing Company. But anyway, we are merely required to prepare our cost of goods sold budget. So for E7-4, the cost of goods sold budget for the year ended December 31, 2016. We have the finished goods inventory on January 1 for 19,300. Then we are going to determine direct materials used Direct materials inventory on January 1. We add the direct materials uh, purchases of 854,000. And we now get the total direct materials available for use. Then we did that direct materials inventory and, and we get the cost of direct materials used. Then we add directly born factory overhead. We now get the cost of goods manufactured. So again, we are trying to uh, uh, repeat what we have learned about preparing the cost of goods sold section. Oh, here we have the finished goods inventory beginning. Then we are going to compute for direct materials uh, use that's adding direct materials inventory beginning and uh, we add direct materials uh, purchases we now get the direct materials available for use and we did that direct materials inventory December 31 we now get the cost of direct materials used then we add directly bore for 
539,500 and factory overhead of 818,000. That's your total factory overhead cost. So we now get your total cost of goods manufactured. Uh, we have now uh, the sum of uh, direct materials used, direct labor, and factory overhead. So we get the cost of goods manufactured. We are uh, determining the finished goods inventory beginning. Uh, we have now the cost of goods manufactured. Uh, so we get the total cost of goods available for sale. And, okay, so we have now your cost of goods sold budget. In other words, we have your uh, finished goods beginning of 19300 then we add the cost of goods manufactured and we deduct the finished goods inventory and your uh, ending uh, finished goods inventory and finally the cost of goods sold now it's required by uh, uh, e7 does uh, 4 for the cost of goods sold budget. Okay, we go to E7 does uh, 6. 5 is just similar to number 4. In problem E7 does 6, we are required to prepare a budgeted income statement. So for sales, uh, in E7-6, given is the amount of sales, then we did the cost of goods sold, and uh, the, the difference is gross profit. Then deduct selling and administrative expense. So we finally get the income, income from Okay, so we have now E7-6, finally determining your budgeted net income. The fact that we are required here for the budgeted income statement. Now remember that all of these are budgets and uh, they are not yet uh, incurred or uh, Oh, you still prepare a budget here for all uh, that are involved in the requirements. Okay, so in E7 does uh, 7, uh, we are now required or it's determining flexible budget amounts. Uh, Starbucks Incorporated is the following items and amounts as part of its master budget at the 10,000 unit level of sales and production. Okay, so we have now the uh, uh, sales, direct materials, direct labor, variable factory overhead, fixed factory uh, overhead, and uh, here, we have to determine the total dollar amounts for the above items that would appear in a flexible budget at the following volume levels, assuming that both levels are within the relevant range. So in letter A, we have uh, 8,000 uh, unit level of sales and production in the 12,000 units. Hint, you must first determine the unit selling price and certain unit cost. So for the unit selling price, uh, we have the sales of 100,000. Then we de deduct it or divide by 10,000 uh, units. So as uh, 
stated its master budget up to 10,000 unit level of sales and production. In other words, all the figures beginning with sales, ending up with fixed factory overhead, they are all uh, budgeted amounts. But the fact that uh, we are going to prepare a flexible budget, so we first determine the sales per unit, 100,000 divided by 10,000 units. Then direct materials, 20,000 divided by 10,000 units. So you get your direct materials per unit equal to $2 for direct labor. We divide 15,000 by 10,000 units, so we get 1.50. For viable factory overhead, it's 10,000 uh, dollars divided by 10,000 units, so it's $1 per unit. Now, the budgeted totals at the 8,000 unit level since uh, we are asked to use one in letter A, 8,000 unit level of sales and production. In B, it's 12,000 units. So for that, we have now your uh, sales, 8,000 at 10. Now, uh, the fact that we are going to use two points, uh, which are all within the re relevant range, the 8,000 unit level and the 12,000 unit level. So for the budgeted totals at the 8,000 unit level. Okay, so we now have sales, 8,000 units times 10, 80,000 direct materials, 8,000 units times two and direct labor is uh, equal to 15,000 divided by 10,000 units or 1.50 variable factory overhead is 10,000 divided by 10,000 units so the rate is one dollar so for the budget total at the 8,000 unit level that's why we call this flexible budget because we have a budget prepared at any unit level. So with 8,000 units level, unit level, sales is uh, 8,000 times 10. Okay, so we have now direct materials 8,000 times Two, and we have direct labor 8,000 times 1.50 and we have variable factory overhead for 8,000 times 1 and the fixed factory overhead the same at all levels within the relevant range Okay, so we have now the uh, fixed factory overhead, the same at all levels within the relevant range, the given amount in either 7 for the fixed factory overhead is 25,000. So in other words, at any level, as long as it's not beyond the relevant range, the fixed factory overhead is uh fixed in total so the total is the one that is fixed now so for the budget at the 8000 unit level the uh, total budgeted cost uh, includes uh, actually we have uh, sales of uh, 80000 for 8000 unit level but for 12,000 unit level, it's 
12,000 considering that there are 12,000 units and uh, the selling price per unit is 10. Direct materials multiplying 12,000 by 2, direct labor by 1.50 and now we have uh, variable factory overhead and the uh, fixed factory overhead still the same. Okay, so we have now the uh, tables in E7-8, uh, preparing flexible budget using the following per unit and total amounts. Prepare flexible budget at the 14,000. 15,000 and 16,000 unit level. Okay, so we have now for uh, E7, that's E, required is to prepare a flexible budget. Now we call this a flexible budget because there are several estimated units. So we have your uh, estimated uh, units are 14,000, 15,000, and 16,000 units. So the sales price per unit is $75. We merely multiply the number of units by $75. And uh, this is why we call it... Uh, flexible budget because you have the budgets at different levels 14,000, 15,000 and 16,000 units. Each of these will be multiplied by 75 per unit. Then we deduct the variable cost. Your variable rate for direct materials 24. Again, you multiply by the number of units. And direct labor is at 750. You multiply by uh, 14,000 units. Okay, so 14,000 units times 750. Uh, 14,000 units times 750. Then we have 15,000 units times 750 and uh, we have 16,000 units. Then you multiply by 7.50, you get 120. The variable uh, factory overhead, the rate is 15 per unit. So again, you multiply 15 by 14,000 by 15,000 and by 16,000 units. So the variable selling, the administrative uh, expenses at 12 per unit, uh, you multiply by 14,000 uh, units and uh, we get 168,000, 180,000 and 192,000. So we now get the total variable cost. In other words, adding direct materials, direct labor, variable factory overhead, variable selling and admin, and we get the total variable cost for uh, uh, 14,000 uh, units, 15,000 and 16,000. Uh, we have your unit levels of production. So uh, we now get your uh, total variable cost per unit and the total for 114,000 uh, well, units, 15,000 and 16,000. So we are trying to emphasize this time sales minus the, the variable cost. Sales minus variable cost will give the contribution margin. Sales minus the variable cost will give the contribution margin. 
So we now have sales of 75 minus 58.50. So you get 16.50. That's your contribution margin. And uh, per total, 1,050,000 minus 819,000. We get 231,000 and so on. So in other words, we have the focus here is the contribution margin. Uh, the contribution margin being the difference between your sales and the variable cost. So the sales minus the variable cost will give us the contribution margin. So for all columns. Okay, we now go to uh, uh, the uh, fixed cost. Uh, we deduct the fixed cost fixed in total. So regardless of the activity level, or regardless of the production, as long as the production is within the relevant range, fixed factory overhead will remain the same. So we have now the contribution margin, then we deduct the total fixed cost. The difference is the operating income. Then now we have uh, 200. Uh, for seven five hundred, we deduct the uh, fixed cost. We now get the operating income. So take note that fixed cost remain the same, while variable cost will vary in total. Next, we have E seven does nine. Uh, required is uh, preparation of a uh, performance report for test manufacturing incorporated has the following flexible budget formulas and amounts so we have the sales direct materials direct labor variable factory overhead variable selling and admin expense fixed factory overhead and fixed selling and admin expense actual results for me for the production and sale of 5,000 units were as follows. So we have now sales. Uh, we have four uh, 5,000 units. And you multiply by uh, here, uh, 5,000 units is the actual uh, results for me uh, for the production and sale of 5,000 units. So we now get the sales for 5,000 uh, units of uh, uh, 5,000 multiplied by uh, 25 per unit. So it gives us sales of 125,000. That's based on 5,000 units multiplied by the unit selling price of 25. So we get 125,000. Then the actual with the 5,000 units, the actual sales amounted to 120,000. There is a variance equal to 5,000, which is unfavorable because the budget uh, exceeded the actual in terms of the number of units and uh, the same however in terms of the prices the budgeted sales exceeded the actual now the variance is unfavorable because we are talking about income about sales now earlier I mentioned that if the budget is more than the actual and it relates to cost and expenses the budget exceeding the actual it's favorable but uh, i was talking about cost and expenses however if you talk about income 
and sales is an income account. So the budget exceeding the actual, uh, the variance here is unfavorable because sales is an income account. So uh, it's the reverse of uh, cost and expenses. Okay, so the budget uh, amount is 125,000 while the actual is 120,000. Now here we have an unfavorable variance. Okay, then we have to deduct the variable cost of uh, direct materials, uh, variable cost uh, given number nine, uh, direct materials given is uh, 26,000, direct labor is uh, 14,000, these are actual cost, variable factory overhead 25,500 and then variable selling and admin expenses 5,500. So we now get the uh, totals for the actual actual amounts given. Well, these ones are based on the budget. So if you multiply 5,000 units for direct materials, it's uh, 5 per unit for the budget, 25,000. Direct labor is 5,000 units times 3. Variable factory overhead times 4. And variable selling and admin expense is 12. Uh, variable selling and admin expense as given. The variable selling and admin expense is 1 per unit. So 5,000 units times one is $5,000. Well, these amounts are given. So the total variable cost, uh, the total budgeted variable cost is 65,000. While the total actual variable cost is 71,000. So the variance is unfavorable because the actual variable cost exceeded the budget. Okay, I have mentioned earlier that for cost and the expenses, if the budget exceeds the actual, it's favorable. But if the actual exceeds the budget, it's unfavorable. Take note that it's the reverse. And the treatment for sales, uh, it's unfavorable if the budget exceeds the actual because sales is revenue item while the variable costs are all cost. So we now get the contribution margin as the difference between sales and variable costs. Okay, so we have now the contribution margin uh, budget, 60,000, while the actual is only 49,000. So meaning it's unfavorable uh, contribution mar margin again is an income element, yes, like your sales. So that's why it's unfavorable is the reverse of uh, uh, revenue uh, is the reverse of cost then we have the fixed cost the fixed factory overhead the budget is uh, for 25,000 per month is given and uh, we have now the uh, the, the actual is 26 750 then the variance is unfavorable because the actual fixed factory overhead is greater than the budget then we have the fixed selling and admin uh, expenses for uh, the given of uh, 20 
uh, okay, so we have now total fixed cost uh, budget for the 5,000 deduct from the contribution margin of 60,000. So we have the difference of 15,000 as the operating income. While the actual, we have 49,000 contribution margin. Uh, we deduct the total fixed cost. So we have a difference of 2,450. Uh, here we have the operating income budget is 15,000. However, the actual is much smaller. That's why the variance is unfavorable. So we have now the uh, requirements for uh, problem nine. Uh, exercise seven does nine. Uh, preparing another performance report. So we have now the uh, requirement prepare performance report for me that includes the identification of the favorable and unfavorable variances. Okay, reverse manufacturing company has the following flexible budget format, uh, formula, and amounts. So we now have the uh, budget sales per unit, direct materials, direct labor, variable factory overhead, uh, variable selling the administrative and fixed uh, factory cost, fixed factory overhead. We have now the totals and the fixed uh, factory overhead and fixed selling and the administrative costs are given uh, in terms of months. Okay, we have the actual results for me. Uh, the performance report. Actually, when we talk about performance report, it's being prepared by a department head. So uh, a department head now will compare his budget with the actual and showing a variance. That's why we call it performance report. A performance report is actually in connection with responsibility accounting, uh, meaning you are accountable for costs that uh, are under your control. So responsibility accounting means that you are responsible for the costs that are under your uh, responsibility and uh, the costs that are controllable by you. So in other words, controllable costs are costs that are under the responsibility of a certain department head and uh, should be shown in uh, his performance report. So again, the performance report will include the budget and the actual and finally the variance, which will again become the basis for uh, making decisions for the next period. So we have the sales now per budget equal to, here we have 6,000 units produced. Uh, so for the budget, 6,000 multiplied by 20. Well, the actual amount given is 125,000. The variance is favorable because the actual sales uh, in dollars exceeded the budgeted sales. And uh, we now have favorable results. Then we have the variable cost, direct materials, uh, directly born variable factory overhead. Uh, you simply multiply 6,000 units by the budgeted uh, per unit cost of direct materials, direct labor, and 
viable factory overhead and your variable selling and administrative expense. So again, we have the variances. Uh, having in mind that uh, if the budget exceeds the actual for cost and expenses, now the variance is favorable. However, for revenues, including sales, if the actual uh, exceeds the budget, now that's the time that uh, you will have your uh, discrepancies in the form of variance. So if the total variable cost of uh, budgeted amount 78,000, actual of 84,000, since we are now talking about cost, variable cost, so the variance is uh, bigger. No, I mean the uh, here variable cost since the actual exceeds the budget kainia cost. So the variance of six thousand is unfavorable. Then the contribution margin, the difference between sales and the variable cost. So we have unfavorable variance. Finally, we did that the fixed cost fixed factory overhead and selling and administrative expenses. So we now get the total fixed cost. And from the, this total fixed cost, we are going to deduct from contribution margin. The difference is operating income. Okay, the, the operating income actually is taken uh specifically for the purpose of uh, um, recognizing the performance of a certain department head and uh, determining if his uh, uh, report shows a uh, favorable or an unfavorable variance. Okay, we have now uh, problem uh, 11, calculating factory overhead. So we have now problem uh, 11 for calculation of factory overhead. Uh, we have 5,000 units, 5,200 units and 4,000. 500 units. Now, if the normal capacity is 5,000 units, meaning operating at 4,500 units is at 90% of the normal capacity. If you operate and uh, produce 5,200 units, meaning your operations were above the normal capacity. So it's 104% of the normal capacity. Now the fixed costs are given in uh, number 11. The fixed cost is uh, 2,500. Uh, here given fixed cost, uh, fixed overhead, fixed volume is $2,500. And variable overhead is seven five hundred. For uh, here, we are given the fixed overhead at this volume of five thousand units, and the variable overhead is seven five hundred. So that gives us the fixed cost at all levels till two thousand five hundred. Uh, it does not state that uh, the operations are already beyond the relevant range. So in other words, the fixed cost is still the same. Then for the variable cost, uh, 7,500, that's at normal capacity at... Uh, uh, 90%. So we have uh, the uh, amount of the variable cost equal to 6,000. 
750 and uh, at 104 percent multiplied by 7,500 so we get 7,800 that's the variable cost as we know that uh, a variable cost will vary in uh, accordance with the volume of production uh, the more you uh, sell the variable cost will increase uh, but the fixed cost will remain as long as the sales are made within the relevant range okay so after this we have to uh, determine uh, the total factory overhead 10,000, 10,309 to 50 at different uh, operating levels. Then the factory overhead per unit is uh, $2. Factory overhead here is 10,000 divided by 5,000. Factory overhead per unit, it's uh, $2. Here, it's only 1.98 because you divide 10,300 by 5,200. Actually, it's 104% of the normal. And 4,500 units, if you divide 9,250, units uh, meaning the higher the number of units here we have a lower unit cost so here we have uh, 4,500 we divide 9,250 by 4,500 units you get a higher unit cost because you have fewer units to absorb the fixed cost. Okay, the fixed cost is uh, here at 2,500. So you try to observe the factory overhead per unit at normal capacity, it's $2 per unit. At below the normal capacity, it's higher. While at above the normal capacity, the factory overhead per unit is lower. Now you have this uh, illustrations to make you understand better your uh, factory overhead uh, rates or computations per unit. Now we go to uh, number 12, is still calculation of factory uh, overhead. Calculate the amount of factory overhead allowed for the actual levels of production and uh, compute the factory overhead per unit at different levels of production. Whereas the normal capacity of the plant is 7,500 units per month. Fixed overhead is 10,000 at this volume. And the uh, variable overhead is 15,000. So we have now the actual uh, production in units and uh, we have the actual uh, factory overhead. Okay, so in E7, Thus, 12, we have the calculation of factory overhead allowed at different levels as uh, stated. The normal capacity is 7,500 units. Uh, the fixed cost of 10,000 and the variable cost of 15,000 at normal capacity. If you divide 15,000 by 7,500, now the variable rate per unit is 2. 
and the fixed cost 10,000 divided by 7,500, that will give you 1.33. So dividing the factory overhead total by the number of units, okay, we get 7,500 uh, divided, divide mo ang uh, 25,000 dollars divided by 7,500 units, so you get 3.33. And uh, here, uh, we have to divide 25,750 by 7,875 units. So again, the more units, the lower will be the cost per unit. The fewer the units, the higher will be your cost per unit. Okay, so take note that the uh, company here computes for the factory overhead per unit in uh, requirement letter B at different levels. Okay, so we have now uh, computing for... Uh, factory overhead in uh, number 12 also factory overhead and now we have number 13 calculating uh, factory overhead again we have the standard is 8,000 units fixed overhead is uh, $4,000 that's uh, 50 cents times 8,000 uh, units. So we have 4,000. The variable is 150 per unit. We get 12,000. So the fixed cost will remain fixed regardless of the activity level. However, let's consider within the relevant range. So the variable overhead is 1.50 per unit. That's the variable overhead. Uh, we have 1.50 per unit. We are given the variable overhead rate. So we multiply this by number of units. We get the total. Uh, then we have now the... Uh, months involved month one and month two for the budget in uh, month one uh, we have the uh, budget equal to 14,800 in month one the actual factory overhead is 14,700 whereas the budget is 14,800. In uh, month one, production is 7,200 uh, units. And uh, you have now the uh, um, cost per unit to be determined. Uh, so for uh, month one, when we have 7,000 200 uh, units and uh, we have the uh, budget of 14,800 while the actual is uh, 14,700 that's given the variance of uh, 100 is favorable because the budgeted cost exceeds the actual then for month two, we have uh, 16, uh, 600. That's for month two, uh, four uh, given. Okay, and then we have uh, the actual of 17, uh, 400. The variance is 800. Okay, for month one, we have the budget of 14800 So for month one, the, the variance favorable. Month two, it's unfavorable because 
the actual cost exceeds the budget okay so we have now your uh, problems to be uh, let's begin with the problem seven does one okay we have now the uh, requirement of the problem in letter a production budget direct materials budget and direct labor budget so we have now for the production budget the estimated sales is 40,000 units given and then we have to add the desired ending inventory on May 31 for uh, 6,000 units and the total we deduct 2,000 units the beginning inventory so the total production is 44 thousand units that's uh, the estimated production based on the estimated production we have to determine the direct materials uh, budget so for 44 thousand units for material x standard is one gallon so we get 44 thousand here for our quantities required for production and for material y it's one pound per unit so we have uh, 44 thousand pounds okay so we have now the uh, number of uh, total for material x since we are going to add the uh, desired ending inventory and uh, for material X and deduct the estimated beginning inventory. So the total quantity to be purchased, 45,000 gallons of uh, material X and 44,000 pounds of material Y. And you multiply this by... Uh, the uh, unit price per material uh, since we have two types of materials required so the uh, unit price is uh, four dollars per gallon and uh, for y it's two dollars per pound so in other words we have the uh, Total direct materials uh, purchases uh, for material X, $180,000 and for material Y, only $88,000. Next, we go to the direct labor budget for uh, steel. We are going to use 40 four thousand units for uh, one unit uh, needed is point uh, five hours in uh, the forming department and in the finishing department it's uh, stated to be uh, here one hour uh, 44 and uh, you will uh, notice that uh, the given columns for hours per unit forming point 50 and finishing one hour and uh, we now get the number of hours forming is 22,000 and finishing 44,000 and we multiply by the given hourly uh, rates Next, we go to uh, problem 7 does 2 required are sales budget, production budget, direct materials budget, direct labor, factory overhead, and cost of goods sold budget. We have budgeted factory overhead cost for 2016 
for indirect materials, indirect labor, depreciation of building and equipment, power and light, and the total. So we have now for uh, sales, production, direct materials, direct labor and factory overhead budgets, entire companies, budgeted unit sales for the year where passenger car tires and the 20,000 truck tires 25,000. The budgeted selling price for truck tires was uh, 200 per tire and for passenger car tires it was $65 per tire. The beginning finished goods inventories were expected to be 2,000 truck tires and 5,000 passenger tires. Now for the beginning inventory for a total cost of 326,478. We desired ending inventories at 2,500 and 6,000 respectively with a total cost of $400,510. There was no anticipated beginning or ending work in process inventory for either type of uh, tire. The standard materials uh, quantities for each uh, material uh, type. No, the standard material quantities for rubber truck 30 pound passenger car 10 pound steel belts truck 4 pound and for a passenger car we have uh, 10 pounds and 1.5 pounds okay the purchase prices of rubber and steel for two dollars and three dollars per pound respectively. Desired ending inventories for rubber and steel were sixty thousand and uh, six thousand pounds respectively. The estimated beginning inventories for rubber and steel were seventy five thousand and seven thousand pounds respectively. The direct labor hours required for each type of tire well as follows. So in the molding and finishing department, the tire and we have okay. So uh, this time uh, let's begin with uh, the sales budget uh, for actually we have two products a uh, passenger car tires and the 20,000 units unit selling price 65 so we have the total sales and for the truck tires uh, the total sales for the two uh, products is 12 million eight hundred thousand for the production budget if uh, since the company is aware that it will be selling the unit sales volume, so for the passenger car tires, 120,000 uh, estimated sales, truck tires, 25,000. Plus this hard ending inventory on December 31 of 6,000 and 2,500 tires. So we have the total. And uh, from the total, we deduct the estimated beginning inventory. We get the total production. Production, 121,000 uh, for the passenger car tires. And for the truck tires, 25,500. Now, sec third, we have to prepare direct materials budget. For the passenger car tires, we are already aware that uh, production will be 121,000 tires 
and uh, each would require 10 pounds of rubber and 1.5 pounds of steel belts, both in pounds. Then for the truck tires, 25,500 to be produced and each tire will need 30 pounds uh, for a rubber and for steel belts, four pounds. Plus the desired ending inventory on December 31, we get the total. So adding the production and the ending inventory, we get the total, deduct the beginning inventory, we now get the total quantity of materials to be purchased and the estimated unit price. So we have now the total direct materials purchases budget. Then we have the direct labor budget again, ours required for uh, production, ours required for production since uh, we have estimated the uh, production of passenger car tires equal to 121,000 and uh, we need uh, 0.10, meaning 0.10 of an hour. So we will be using 12,100 uh, hours for uh, molding and uh, 6,050 hours for finishing. And for truck tires, uh, if you will be producing 25,500 truck tires and uh, each would require 0.25 hour. So we get 6,375 and 3,825 and the early rates. So the total direct labor cost 277, 125, and 128.375. Next, we have the uh, factory overhead uh, budget for indirect materials given indirect labor depreciation of uh, building and uh, equipment. All of these uh, budgeted amounts are given total of $692,100. Then for number six requirement, because of good sold budget, now we have to start with finished goods inventory in January 1. Then we have uh, direct materials inventory January 1, 171000 uh, in our previous computations, then we add direct materials uh, purchases, total direct materials available for use, then deduct direct materials inventory, and uh, we get the cost of materials used of 4 million eight hundred thousand five hundred. Then we add direct labor and factory overhead. We get the cost of goods manufactured. Total is cost of goods available for sale and then deduct the finished goods uh, inventory on December 31. Now we have your budgeted cost of goods sold. So we have now the cost of uh, rubber, 150,000 and the steel belts, 21,000, so the total 171,000 for uh, 171,000 beginning inventory and the ending inventory equal to 138,000. Now for uh, uh, problem uh, seven one here, uh, seven one does, I mean, uh, problem, uh, problem seven does two, uh, seven does two. Then uh, the next here is problem seven does three, selling administrative expenses budget. 
budgeted income statement. So we have now the uh, requirements to be answered in uh, good form. So we have uh, the selling and administrative expenses budget, including for selling, advertising uh, expense, sales salaries, and travel. So we have the total. We are now trying to classify the uh, operating expenses into selling and administrative. So for uh, administrative, we include office salaries, uh, office salaries, expense. Then we have officer salaries, expense, office rent, office supplies. Okay, so I think you don't need to keep on repeating the word expense since at the top we already have the caption selling expenses. So what you will be including here, you only write advertising, sales, salaries, travel, and then total. You don't need to keep on repeating the word expense, no? It's a waste of time. So just say office salaries. So we now get the total selling and administrative expenses for problem three. And then second requirement is the budgeted income statement. So the budgeted income statement for the year ended December 31, 2016. So we now begin with the sales. Uh, then we deduct cost of goods sold. We have the gross profit, deduct selling and administrative expenses. We have the income from operations. Then we deduct income tax. Finally, we have the net income. Okay, so for 7 does uh, 4 are required. We have sales, production, direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead budgets. Okay, so we have now the uh, products manufactured are tables and chairs. The budgeted selling price for tables was 175 and 75 for chair. The beginning finished goods inventories were expected to be 1,000 tables and 4,000 chairs. For total cost of $240,000, we decide in the inventories. There was no anticipated beginning or ending work in process inventory for either item. So we now get the uh, materials to be used, aratan and binding cane. And uh, we have now the direct labor hours. For table in the assembly department, 0.5 of an hour, finishing 0.25. And for a chair, direct labor rate given for assembly and finishing. And we have the budgeted factory overhead. So we now get the uh, sales budget for tables and chairs. So we now get the total sales of 14 million. 250,000. Then for uh, production budget for tables and chairs. So we add sales from the sales budget. We add the desired ending inventory. So for the total, we deduct the estimated beginning inventory. So we have the total production uh, budget for both products. Then identifying the total production budget, we now determine direct materials budget with two types of materials, rattan per yard and binding cane per yard. So the quantities required for production 
again we are using 3522,000 chairs and the needed materials uh, per chair and per yard uh, per table. So we now add the desired ending inventory, December 31, and deduct the estimated beginning inventory in January 1. Total quantity to be purchased multiplied by the unit price. Next, we have the uh, direct labor budget identifying the estimated production, then the uh, number of hours required per unit, both in the assembly and finishing department for tables and chairs. So we now get the uh, total number of hours, then multiply by the early rate. Finally, we have the factory overhead budget given. So just copy the uh, budgeted factory overhead cost. And the last one is the cost of uh, goods sold budget for the year ended December 31, 2016. We have the finished goods inventory. We add direct materials and inventory budget as computed at the bottom. Add direct materials purchases. The total direct materials available for use. Deduct direct materials and inventory December 31. We have the cost of direct materials used. Then add direct labor and factory overhead. We have the cost of goods manufactured. Then we get the cost of goods available for sale, adding the finished goods inventory beginning and the cost of goods manufactured. So cost of goods available for sale. We deduct the finished goods inventory in December 31. We get the cost of goods sold. Here we are computing for the inventories of direct materials. Okay, so I hope we will be working on the rest of the remaining problems next time. Okay. Good night.